working with a group, various members may really want different things. People may want different outcomes from the group. Others may want to just do this thing in a different way, a different process. The real question is, how are we going to manage the conflict that will arise? Well, your response, Ben, comes from understanding that conflict can be productive. And it's important for the facilitator to realize that they need to remain calm and neutral through this conflict because it isn't about you. To keep neutral as a facilitator, it's important to know what to expect and to get yourself ready to know what to do if a rant occurs. So when someone begins to rant, the conflict begins, how will you respond? Well, that's right. And it's not knowing just how to respond, but also knowing when to respond. Because there is a point where venting may be appropriate, but it is up to the facilitator to choose a strategy maybe to work through that conflict at times. When a group gets together, there are often issues that have built up over time. This unresolved conflict may emerge in the form of ranting on particular issues. The first step is to pause and make sure that we, as a facilitator, that we understand the issue and cause of the conflict at hand. When ranting occurs, the facilitator really needs to listen to see what the group is saying. Let the person be heard and clarify to get to the real issue. You may even need to ask permission to clarify the topic or to share another perspective on this issue. At this moment, your neutrality is critical, but most difficult. Keeping emotions, body language, and tone of voice in check is quite difficult, but very important. When conflict arises, the question to ask yourself is, what will happen if I do nothing? If the answer to this question is that the group will be less effective, then you are obligated to take action. As a facilitator, it is important to understand that there are different options available for handling conflict. It's important to know when to use different types of interventions as well. We are really trying to move from dysfunctional arguments to healthy debates that will be productive. There are five basic approaches to resolving conflict. Competing turns conflict into a win-lose contest. A facilitator should try different strategies, as this is not the most productive. Accommodating to keep the peace may help in the moment, but rarely is that productive. Avoidance isn't productive. However, if the topic is trivial or emotions are too high, this may be the best option. Compromising between different views means that both sides have to change. This may lead to no one being entirely pleased with the outcome. While more productive than avoiding an issue, compromising isn't an ideal strategy. Collaborating promotes an outcome that everyone agrees to. The group solves the problem together by developing next steps. The facilitator may prompt the group during this process by using statements, an awareness statement about the facts, an impact statement of the consequences, and a redirect statement which brings the group back to solving the issue. This may require extra time, but it is worth it to ensure a positive outcome. Often, Kelly, I have a tendency to want to avoid conflict with certain groups. You know what, but that's really detrimental to the group's goals. And I think that's natural, Ben. And I felt that through my experiences, I gained confidence in using the strategies the more I did implement them. So yes, it takes more time, but it's best for the facilitator to get the group working through that conflict. And then the facilitator doesn't own that whole process. It just takes the courage to trust the strategies and to address the conflict. 